Welcome back to Drop the Box. Today we're going to be doing rear discs and pads on this Astro Hitch. What we're going to do now is we're going to extract the old brake fluid from the reservoir and we're going to do this for two reasons. One, because we're going to change the brake fluid anyway. And two, when we push the pistons back on the brake calipers, that is going to push uh, the fluid that's in the brake calipers back to the reservoir and that can overflow and cause a bit of a mess. So it's be always best to take a little bit out before we start. As you can see, the discs and pads uh, need a little bit of attention. And that's uh, fairly close to the limit there on those brake pads. So to strip on the brakes, first we're going to take off this caliper. And it's held on with a bolt at the top and at the bottom. To remove these bolts, you're going to need a 13mm spanner and a 17mm spanner. Once you've taken these bolts out, you can discard them because there'll be new ones in with the new brake pads. Next, you need to take an old screwdriver or pry bar and slowly pry the caliper out of position. There's no real need um, to bungee cord this calp out of the way because it's going to be held in position by the brake cable so I'll just float around there now we need to remove the old brake pads from the carrier again just use a screwdriver to slowly manipulate them out As you can see, they're quite worn. Now we're going to go around to the back of the hub. And the next stage is to take the caliper carrier off. And you can do this by removing two bolts, which is one there and one down there. Now you're going to need an E socket to take these out, and it's an E18. You're probably going to need a breaker bar to uh, start these bolts off because they're normally quite tight. Top one. And that's the bottom one. the caliper carrier removed. So we put that to one side. Now we're going to move back onto the front. And the last part is to take the disc off. To remove the disc, first we need to take out this uh, securing screw. And in this case, it is a Torx 27. Now that the securing bolt is out, we need to knock the disc off with a hammer. So I'll just give it a couple of gentle taps as you turn in the disc. And it will come off. Like so. 
what we're going to do now is a bit of cleaning. So first of all, we need to clean all of this rust off the hub. So the surface is nice, nice and clean, ready for the new disc. And we are also going to strip down this carrier and service this carrier at the same time. So the best thing I found to clean these hubs off is get a drill with a wire brush on the end and just go over it. After you've cleaned it, just go over the surface area with your fingers to make sure you haven't missed any high spots. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clean up this um, carrier, uh, brake bag carrier. So first take a screw, flathead screwdriver and take off these old um, brake pad clips. Uh, you can discard them because we're going to get new ones in uh, with the new brake pads. Now, what you want to do now is just run a wire brush over the whole of this and just do you know a little bit of maintenance, clean it all up. You know it's been a good few thousand miles since this has been off last, so you want to clean it all up so it last another few thousand, good few thousand miles. So, start cl clean up the sec different sections, concentrate in, in this area here, and just get all the old crud off it. So now that we've cleaned the carrier up, as you can see it's a lot better. Next, we need to get some attention to these sliders. Now, these sliders are fine. They slide back and forth with no problem really free both sides no issues however you know you go in this far to change the discs on the pads you might as well take these sliders out and clean these up and regrease these as well so like i've just done there just get a small flathead screwdriver and gently prise this boot off and then the slider will slide out and then what we need to do is clean all this old grease off as you can see yes, it's really dark and gooey so we'll refresh all this and clean the inside of the carrier out as well put new grease in there and away to go now that everything's been cleaned we need to start with the assembly so First of all, we need to take some new grease. First, put in the carrier holders like that. Ideally, you would have a small paintbrush, but I don't have one. So, tip of your finger will do. And around the shaft of the slider, make sure you cover the whole surface. then put it into the hole and just work it in so all of the grease goes all the way down the shaft into the inside like so now I'll take your boot slide it over the slider and then just push it then so it pops back into place Apply a little bit more grease if you need to and then you just need to simply slide it back into the shaft and make sure the boot is fixed in place like so. As you can see our slider is sliding nice and freely with no resistance. It's just the same then for this side. So here's our new box of brake pads. Um, just a little side note. Um, there have been a few fake Brembo products been knocking about lately. Um, some of them have even found their way to the part suppliers. So it's always best 
to make sure the seal is intact and on the box. And if you download the Brembo app and scan that QR code, it will tell you what to look for on your Brembo pads to make sure that uh, you know that they're genuine. So as you can see, we've got two sets of brake pads, new bolts, and new sliders for the carrier. So we want new sliders. So I'll take on nice and serviced carrier. And now that's all we're gonna do is put these new sliders into place. As you can see there, there's a little groove they sit over, it's over the top, and they just press in like so. You know, and this is why I go to the trouble of cleaning these carriers so in depth because when you just when you're assembling everything back together, everything just goes back together nice and easy, nice and smooth. Everything fits as it should because there's no crud in the way. And just makes everyone's life easier. And you know, it's nice to take a little bit of pride in your work. As well. Right, so that carrier is all serviced and ready to go back onto the car. We're going to move on now to sort in out this brake caliper. So the first thing we need to do to this caliper is push the piston back so we can fit the new disc and pad in. Now unlike the front uh, calipers, the rear ones need to be turned and pushed at the same time. So you need a rear brake caliper kit like this. So that's all this does is if you assemble it up like so, we get that adapter. So you can see the lugs and the adapter will fit into the grooves on the piston. So what happens as we're let me let me just put this in first. So fit those legs into the grooves, wind it up so it's tight. So what this little device does now as we're turning it, it's turning and pushing back at the same time. So that's how you push the rear caliper back. See what it's doing? Turning. And as it turns, obviously it's going up the thread. So then that's pushing it in at the same time. Off. Take it away, and as you, can, as you can see now, the piston is completely pushed back into its home position. So now that we've done that, we're going to give the caliper a quick clean, get rid of any of the old brake dust, rust, and whatever crud is in there, and then we will be able to start with assembling it all with all the new parts. When you unbox your new brake discs, it's always advised to clean your new brake discs with some brake cleaner because when they're manufactured and stored, they're coated it in a thin layer of oil and this stops them from rusting when they're on the shelf. So just give them a quick squirt with some brake cleaner 
and rub them down on either side. Now, make sure you use plenty of brake cleaner to get all of that oil off it, otherwise um, you won't have very good brakes at all. So what we're going to do now is just fit everything in the reverse order that we took it off. So first I'm going to put the disc on, line the holes up and then put your little securing screw back in. There's no need to uh, put this up too tight, it's just to make sure the disc is located in the right position for the wheel nuts to go through to the holes. So I'll just put it in place, lift it up a little bit. Next we're going to take our caliper carrier. Slide that into place. And don't forget to put some Loctite on your bolts before you refit them. So just lift both the bolts up with a ratchet. The torque settings for the bolts of the caliper carrier is 100 newton meters. This on either side of the pad and that's where it's going to sit in the grooves of the carrier and that's where it's going to slide back and forth as you press the brake. Uh, you put a little bit of grease there just so it stops uh, any squeaking. You do see mechanics put it all over the back as well but there's absolutely no need especially if you buy tidy brakes and Let's be honest, you shouldn't be skimping on parts that are going to, you know, stop your vehicle. I said it once, and I'll say it again. Never skimp on parts that are going to stop or steer your vehicle. Now that the pads are in place, I'm just going to take the caliper and slide it back into position. And then with our new bolts, which were supplied with the brake pads, because we bought tidy brake pads, not cheap ones. And the torque setting for these bolts are 25 newton meters. To bleed the brakes, and for this you will need a 11 mil spanner to open the bleed nipple. Now there's already um, a short video on the channel for how to bleed your brakes, so I'm not going to go too in depth on it here um, but I will leave a link for that video in this, the description of this video. So once you're happy that the fluid is nice and clean and all the bub bubbles out of it, close the bleed nipple and remove your drain bottle. That's the whole assembly now, removed, cleaned, refitted and ready to go. The next thing you need to do is pump the foot pedal. This is probably the most important part of doing any brake job and that is pump the foot pedal because as it stands this piston isn't um, fully out so if you move the vehicle and wanted to press the brakes that first press of the pedal will be the piston coming out to touch the pads so you probably won't have any brakes especially if you've changed all four corners. So always remember that after doing your brakes, pump the foot pedal. The last things to do are torque your wheels, check on top up your brake fluid, and pump that foot brake one more time, just to be sure. And well, that's it. I hope you found the video helpful. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And if there's anything you want to see in the future, please leave a little comment and I'm sure we can do something for you. Uh, please stay tuned. There's plenty more content coming up and we'll see you again. Thanks.